Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. My name is Chris. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, this is my old Apple box. Okay, I use, I've used this for years. I use it to prop things up, to paint things on, you name it. It's become just kind of a workhorse around the shop, but it is time to upgrade. So without further ado, I've made these three and they're multiple sizes. These actually have some congruency or some similarities. This one's a little different and I'm gonna show you some uses for these. Also, we're gonna show you how to make them as well. Also, I got a quick announcement, but, but, and check this out. You guys know what this is? So last year, 2019, I went to WorkbenchCon. I brought a piece of Baltic birch with me. I thought it was a silly idea, but I figured I would have everybody who was there, everybody who was a maker, sign this thing. And it turned out to be one of the coolest parts of the, of the uh, convention for me. And uh, yeah, this is definitely a memento, a keepsake. And I have an announcement about WorkbenchCon 2020 coming up here in late February. So if uh, you guys stick around, we're gonna make these and I'm gonna give you an announcement about this. Let's get to it. All right, so you might be asking yourself, what exactly is an Apple box? Well, it's a simple box of various different sizes and lengths and heights and all kinds of stuff made of wood, simply put. Typically there's a hole or a little channel drilled out where you can grab them and move them around for handles. Uh, typically they were used in the film and photography industry, whether to prop up different things while they're making different shots or propping up people. I mean, there's a reason why The Rock and Kevin Hart do interviews sitting down. They don't have Apple boxes around for Kevin to stand on. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> also, there's another video here. I'm going to link it below. Adam Savage did a video recently where he attached a rickshaw to a robotic dog. No joke. And in this clip, you're going to see him using Apple boxes to help him accomplish this task. I'm definitely going to link that below. Really cool video. The technology in it is pretty amazing. If you haven't seen it, check it out. So in a nutshell, they're used for all kinds of stuff. I use them typically. I will put one down and put a Lazy Susan on it and paint or spray lacquer smaller projects. That's a really handy use for it because honestly, once you make them, you don't really care what happens to them. They're rugged, they're stiff, they're great. So make them and I'm gonna show you how right now. One other thing I wanna point out, you can actually buy these on Amazon, but check out that price tag. I think it's better we just make them ourselves. All right, the process starts by cutting down some Baltic birch. You can use three quarters of an inch or half an inch in thickness. However, I found a piece here that's five eighths of an inch in thickness, kind of in between those two, and it's gonna work out really well for me in my situation. Again, I'm gonna make three of these boxes out of one sheet of plywood, and this is really nothing too glamorous here. I'm just cutting everything down to all these different various lengths. And then, you know what? I'm gonna do a light sanding after this, and then we're gonna go ahead and start to do some assembly. So here are the fronts, I'm sorry, the backs and sides of all of these. I haven't cut the actual pieces where we're gonna drill a hole and we're gonna make handles. But at this point, just putting down a moving blanket, gonna go ahead and sand them. Just feel for the touch. This isn't gonna be a glamorous project by any means, but you don't want splinters being in your hands. Of course, I'm gonna go to my multi-use station here. Got some screws in one of these drawers. If you haven't seen that video as well, that was a video where I did an Ikea hack and I made a 48 drawer storage mobile cart. Very cool, check it out down below as well. I would like to note I am not using any glue in this, just mechanical fasteners. Reason being, well, glue is not necessarily needed and also, in case you need to take these apart for whatever reason, at least you have the option. Now, turning my attention to making the front and back of each of these, I need a place to grab these boxes to move them around. So I'm gonna find the center part of each of these pieces, make a mark, and then the step one, all you gotta do. Cut a hole in a box. Oh, goodness. All right, so how I'm gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna use a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit mounted in the drill press, and I've attached both the front and back pieces together with some blue tape. Reason being, well, I'm gonna clean up that drill bit a little bit. Reason being, well, I'm gonna drill both holes at the same time. Makes things just a bit easier. And yeah, it turned out pretty clean. So with that process complete over on the drill press, now I'm gonna take a chamfer bit and just simply ease the edges on all these holes. You don't want to get any splinters when you're moving these things around and this is simply the best way I think to do it. Oh, 
Like I said, no glue, just mechanical fasteners. I'm simply just going to countersink all these holes and use some inch and a half screws to put everything together. By the way, I did use inch and a half screws on the entire project and just figured you guys wanted to know that. So the boxes are almost complete. I'm just going to simply put a hand chamfer over all of the edges on all of these boxes and they are going to be good to go. But let me show you something real quick. I have to put the fronts and backs on the taller pieces and look, I'm using an apple box to help me make an apple box. I guess you call that project inception, maybe. I don't know. Either way, a 240 grit hand sanding is all we need to do. And now it's time to have a little bit of fun. Man, taking me back to the marching band days of high school. You know what, if you could tell me what this drum rudiment is, I'll send you a free glimpse inside swag pack. Leave your answer in the comments. I think that's a fitting way to end this pretty useful project. All right, folks, well, this is this project complete. I recommend anyone who's in the makerspace to get out there and make yourself some of these. They'll come in more handy than you would ever believe. Promise you that, okay? Now, you might have noticed to the right of me is a small little apple box. Of course, I can use this for various projects. I made it off camera, but its purpose isn't for that at all. Its purpose is to come with me to WorkbenchCon 2020. I'm gonna have all the makers up there sign this instead of just a bland old piece of Baltic birch plywood. But special announcement comes right now. I am speaking at the event. I am so excited to be able to share my story and to share our situation. Now. What I'm speaking on is a parent panel. There are five of us. Katie Freeman from Freeman Furnishings is the one putting it on. She's kind of our MC. And there are four other makers that are gonna be along in the panel. Of course, we're gonna learn about Katie and what she does, but it's gonna be myself, Caleb from You Can Make This Too, Shar from The Wood Maven. We've got Brandy from, I think it's Eternal Harvest Decor. And of course, Ellen from Little Bear Furniture. Now, all of us have had a lot of success, a lot of a mild success in the makerspace. I'm not calling what I do a lot of success here, but um, we've had mild success in the makerspace and we're able to balance family life, children, all kinds of stuff, and still coming out here and getting in this platform on social media and making our presence felt. So it's gonna be a great situation, a great talk. And again, I wanna thank WorkbenchCon for allowing us to do this and Katie, you're the one really putting this on for us and you're gonna be our MC and I appreciate you as well. So come on out, 2020 WorkbenchCon coming up this week. I'm leaving tomorrow, that will be Thursday, February 20, what is that, 21st, I believe. So the conference is basically from the 21st to the 23rd, um, I believe. If I'm saying those dates wrong, please forgive me. All the details will be down in the description below. So guys, that's it. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you being here. My name is Chris and we'll see you on that next project. Y'all take care. Oh, and one more thing. I've got shop updates coming. You can probably see what's kind of going on behind me. It's in, well, it's in its, you know, it's in its rough form at this point, but I am gonna be detailing the cost of what this shop entailed, the slab, the pavers, everything in the upcoming video. So if you're not subscribed, stay tuned for that. Y'all take care. See you next time.